Have any of you ever heard of the expression, even a blind dog can trip over a bone? I hear some laughter out there. Some of you think that's kind of funny, maybe. I find that expression a little sad. And I find it sad because I work with organizations, and oftentimes I see them trying to stimulate creativity and innovation with this same approach. Oftentimes we use the terms creativity and innovation in our organization so frequently that they tend to lose meaning. They become buzzwords that we banter around without anybody really understanding what anyone else is talking about when they use these terms. Now I can tell you as a researcher that I often define creativity as the generation of ideas, products, or processes that are new and somehow valuable within a context. But how does that actually help you be more creative or innovative in your organizations? Today I'd like to share with you a way that I conceptualize creativity and innovation that helps me apply these concepts in the real world. And then I'd like to offer some suggestions as to how you can begin to practice what I call creativity with intent. Now, for the sake of this allegory, I'm going to assume that you are here. Here. Now, if we're all here, as we look towards the future, we may have choices. Where are we going next? What are we going to do in the next few hours? Hopefully, all of you have options. Hopefully, there are choices in your future. Now, some of you may have a limited set. Others may have a virtual galaxy of options open to them. If we think of these points of light as options, I believe that creativity helps us generate the potential options that we have to choose from in life. And that innovation is the realization or movement towards a particular option. Let me restate that. Creativity is the generation of options. And innovation is our effort to explore them. Now, I think the main part that I draw from this is that creativity has an inherent direction. And this inherent direction is really important. My research and experience working with the organization leads me to state and believe that efforts to stimulate creativity and innovation often fail when people don't take into account this direction. Now, how do I progress? Oh, I had missed a click. If we just stay where we are right now, I think it's pretty simple. However, my thoughts, and I believe reality is a little more complex than this. How many of you just blinked into existence a few moments ago? Probably not very many. Hopefully not any. I believe we all have a past. And in that past, we've had the opportunity to explore a number of these options. And this past leads us on a trajectory, building momentum, allowing us to have movement from where we were before to where we are now. 
And it's this movement that makes this model a little more complex. Now, I believe probably most of you aren't moving completely at random. If we did, I'm not sure our species would have gotten anywhere. Ideas and options have differing value and worth. We're all here this afternoon because we're interested in ideas worth spreading. That's not an oxymoron. Ideas worth spreading. So what is it that helps us determine what ideas are worth and how we value those ideas? I believe that it's intent. That the direction we have when we think of options is intent. We move with a purpose. And creative ideas have value within that context. Now, most of us within organizations don't move at random. We have a vision of what we want to achieve. We have a purpose for our actions. And it's within this purpose that I believe we find the essence of creativity. It's within this purpose that we, believe, we begin to move forward. Now, these purposes of action can sometimes be vague. They can be clear. They can be modest or grand. I want to provide for my family. I want to cure cancer in five years. We, as a collective, want to become the world's greatest educational institution. All of these are statements of intent. And it's this intent, these purposes, that allow us to judge the value and worth of the options presented to us. Now, we may take different paths to these options. But I believe having this purpose gives us a target with which to shoot for. And we may take paths that lead directly to that target, we may find options that lead us on a more circuitous route. We may even find dead ends, and we have to backtrack. Now, I'm a researcher here at UCL, and I study creativity and innovation within organizations. And researchers have identified many ways to help stimulate creativity within organizations. I'd like to share three with you that I think can help focus your creative efforts. I call these the why, the for whom, and to what end. And I believe that if you apply these three questions, if your groups can answer these three questions, you'll be more successful at applying creativity with intent. Now the why. People want a reason for what they do. If you ask them to be creative, Give them a reason why you're asking them to be creative. Is it to solve a specific issue? Is it to counter an uncertainty in the future? Give people a reason, and they'll give you more effort and pool their collective expertise in a particular direction to help with your creative efforts. The for whom. If I solve this problem, who does it benefit? Thinking about who benefits from our efforts not only allows us to use perspective taking to address problems from multiple directions, but research has shown that thinking about who benefits from your efforts can lead you to higher motivation in tackling tough problems. And let's face it, creative issues are often tough problems. They don't have a clear answer. So thinking about for whom can help you not only with information, but with motivation. And finally, to what end? When we talk about having that end goal, that vision, to what end is, you're asking me to be creative on this problem? How does it fit with our overall goal, with where we want to be in the future? If you can set your creativity requests within a broader context of vision and purpose, 
individuals working on your problems won't be so narrowly focused just on the problem at hand, but thinking about the problem at hand within context of the broader intent for which you're asking them to be creative. Now, when I think about creativity, I'm not saying that this is the only solution, the only way to practice creativity that might be successful. You could have a random brainstorm and send everybody in different directions and have an explosion of ideas. But that's messy. And I think if you were to do that, you might find yourself only succeeding by sheer dumb luck. I don't know about you, but I would rather be a human acting with intent than a blind dog hoping to trip over a bone one of these days. If you have no end goal, if you have no vision, if you have no trajectory and no past momentum, then fine. Reach for an unfocused creativity explosion and deal with the mess. But if you have a vision, a purpose, and a goal, please practice creativity with intent. Thank you.